and we are live with the amazing Stephanie Preisner. And what we've been doing, just as before, I'm going to introduce yourself to her, is we have been talking to loads of artists right now that are in the festival. And um, so we are now bringing back artists who have gone from strength to strength and done amazing things with their creative and their career. Um, and this is Stephanie Prizer. Just before we talk about her, I just want to introduce what amazing things that she has done. She's an award-winning writer for screen and stage, author, director, actor, and can I say activist, Stephanie. Um, widely known for her Netflix series, Can't Cope, Won't Cope, amongst many other productions. We are so delighted to have you back here where you started with uh, First Fortnight many years ago, back in 2013. So Stephanie, I'll hand over to you. I'd love us to tell you, tell us a bit about yourself, what you're doing now, and uh, just Thank something you so much. about you. Yeah. Um, so my name is Stephanie Preisner and uh, you've heard all of what has just been introduced but those things always make me slightly uncomfortable because you know you're really giving like the highlights of, of of your life your CV like the things that you would put on a dating profile like here are all my good parts and I'm sitting here in my living room being like but I have all these other parts of me um that are that are you know that are just as worthy but are you know slightly more difficult and um, so yeah I'm I'm a writer I write um uh, a, a weekly column for the Sunday Independent now and I write tv shows and I've written two books one of them is called why can't everything just stay the same and it's about how I can't really cope with change and the other one is called can I say no which was a book about my struggle with being a people pleaser and mm -hmm. um, so I started um, in the first fortnight in 2013 I wrote a play called Salpadine is my boyfriend Amazing. which <laughs> you have seen it guys <laughs> um you can actually listen to a radio version of it on mm -hmm. online if you if you google the name and radio play it's on there um yeah. but i might bring it back um so yeah. it was about a girl who was it was a one woman show about a girl whose boyfriend leaves to go to australia because in 2013 and the years preceding that that's kind of where all of my friends were going yeah. um and her prime so her her relationship breaks down and her primary relationship becomes one with Salpati yeah. and she clearly has a, a mental health issue she suffers from depression and anxiety though she can't, can't name those things she just sort of describes and the, the play is in rhyme because for me my anxiety sometimes feels like I'm caught in a rhyme like it's relentless and it perpetual and I get stuck in it like like a like a tornado um and that's what I wanted to to encapsulate and so the play is written in rhyme mm. which kind of gives that feeling of relentless exhaustion which is how I often feel um and but at the time I'm saying all these things now at the time I had just written a play and I thought bits of it were funny and bits of it were exciting and I didn't really identify that the things I was saying about this character were things that were true to me now, they they were true to me and I knew that they were true to me, but I didn't kind of have the knowledge. I had the information, but I didn't have the bodily learned knowledge that like, actually, these are my problems as well as this character's. Because in the play, I used to take Salpadine mm -hmm. and the show won a couple of awards and then we got this international tour. So we were touring internationally and um, it was translated into a couple of languages and I was performing it. And during the tour, like if you're if you're training, I trained as an actor in the Gaiety School, and uh, when you're training as an actor, all you want to be doing is touring a show internationally. Like that's literally the dream. And I always thought, like if I was doing this, I'd be happy. If that if I got that gig, I'd be happy. And I was there. I was in Australia. I was at the World Theatre Festival. I was headlining it, uh, and yeah. all of you know when I say it objectively, like I had everything, and I have never been less happy. I was so. I just I wasn't even sad I just was feeling nothing it was like the circuitry of me was just not able was not able to reap the benefits of the experience that I was having um and I had my first panic attack mm -hmm. over there and um I realized this is this is not good like I can't keep doing this so I rang the producer long story short and I said we I need to I need to come home I can't I can't do this anymore and he said okay so I came home but I was so ashamed of 
of that um that I didn't tell anyone that I was coming home and I took these pictures at the airport really close up of postcards of like you know they have the postcards of Uluru and Sydney Harbour Bridge and places that I hadn't even been like I was in Brisbane yeah yeah, yeah. and I kept putting these images up onto Facebook um and people were commenting below being like I can't believe you're there that's so cool can't wait to talk to you about that I was there too and I was in my bed in Dublin like covered in a duvet for for, for very many weeks um wow. very many days maybe maybe like two weeks um and then I deleted my Facebook I was like I can't do this anymore I'm living an actual lie because all of these people want to meet this person that exists online that is happy and touring a show and taking all these amazing pictures and I'm you know covered in Dorito crumbs and lying in my bed and I can't cope with my life and so I need to delete my Facebook and I was also taking a lot of sulfidine and I was like this is this is a problem like I'm now addicted to this and so that started that play was the thing that kind of made me realize that this was not just fiction and I did have a problem so I started to look at uh, how dependent I was on codeine and separate I thought that was the problem initially and then once once I had dealt with that problem the underlying issue was that I I have I have, I have some mental health problems which I've had um actually since since I was a child since I was a teenager um and that's kind of where the work started and I would love to say and then I dealt with that and that is all <laughs> fine but and as most people no, who are I watching don't. will know yeah um those are those are kind of daily those are sometimes daily struggles and you do get a reprieve you know I've had probably sometimes over a year where where things have been fine but um but it's always something that I that I really need to watch and my my job my writing allows me to to process those things and the books that I write are about myself and I, I really do feel honored and privileged that people seem to want to pay me to write things because I get to like use you know journaling and all of those things that really help mental health I I am able to do for a job yeah and um sometimes I have to be kind of uh a little bit cautious about that because I can overshare and that that doesn't help me because people you know you have to kind of protect those parts of yourself that are vulnerable um and yeah so from there I wrote um a tv show um which was called can't cope won't cope which was about uh, a girl, two girls who moved from Cork to Dublin, which was my experience. And they kind of have this semi-toxic friendship um, that can often happen with women where they're very enmeshed and there's a lot of alcohol and a lot of codependence. And um, I thought that from the things that I had seen on screen, I've, all, I've seen so many shows about boyfriends and girlfriends and sexual romantic relationships and and how to know what to do if a guy cheats on you or how to know what gaslighting is or toxic behavior and to get rid of a relationship but I hadn't any scripts or any templates for what to do when a friendship you can't it's not the same as breaking up with a boyfriend like breaking up with a friend it's not there was no roadmap for me when I had to do that in my life and so I wrote the show which is what which is which is what the show is kind of ultimately about in the two seasons that are on Netflix um and grace um, yeah and so kind of all of my all of my work is I would say focused on or inspired by coping mechanisms what do we do to cope and these times during COVID I think we've seen more than ever it's really difficult because the things that we use to cope have been taken from us whether it is drinking in the pub with your mates or going to the gym mm -hmm. or meeting your friends for lunch brunch prosecco I don't know anything there's so little that we can do now and um I know that the greatest toxin to my mental health is is isolation and uh physical isolation is something that we're really being you know asked to do and I think that many of us me as well have have kind of mixed that up with with social isolation with just totally blocking myself off to protect myself and it's it might be protecting me physically from the virus, but it's not protecting my mind from, from the things that happen when my mind is in isolation because me alone with myself, I'm not in a good place. Yeah, and, I, and it's, it's wonderful. I, and thank you so openly for sharing there, for sharing your journey. And it was just, it's amazing when I, when I was reading and going through your journey, it's like, it's, 
it's like you're ever evolving, ever transforming, but you have this willingness to put yourself out there and allow people to be, to share, you share your experience and you help others. And I feel that's what you what you're constantly doing. Um, so thank you. I think, for that. It, Are you, you're, I think it comes back to that impulse of it's that thing I felt in the bed with the Doritos on the Facebook page where the more I presented myself as the best version of myself the more I felt that when people met me in person they would be disappointed by the real me because I wasn't the version that they were expecting and so now I I hate the feeling that like someone is going to be disappointed by how I show up so I wouldn't like if I were on a dating app which I'm not I wouldn't put the best picture of me up there because I would be like I don't I might not look like that on the day so I'll, I'll I'll tone it down and kind of lower people's expectations of me, which is hard when you when you live a life that is in the public eye, when you're writing and people have a perception of you. Mm-hmm. It can be really hard to, you know, you don't want them to be like, yeah, in real life, she wasn't that great. She wasn't that funny. <laughs> she wasn't that funny. You know, it's it's something I think about all the time. And so I try to be the, the most honest version of me because that's all I have, really. Um, and it's and and, that's just so humbling. And thank you. I mean, isn't it? I think it's what's made you. It's really what's given that it's like constantly like you're putting yourself out there with such strength so and and showing a strength but it's be, it's in within vulnerability to be vulnerable to allow yourself to be vulnerable and show that it's um it's commended <laughs> Um, thank you thank and so just uh, and just in relation to can cope won't cope, cope and all of your work that you've done and just mm-hmm. where and, and your writing where where do you get your inspiration your passion where does that come from um that's a question that I'm asked a lot and I always wish that I had like a really interesting answer. <laughs> no worries um, it's not anything but the way that I kind of how I know that I have something to write um is because I'm actually terrible I'm 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 a nightmare like in school I was a nightmare I'm not I was not good at English I'm not like if you say to me like write about a sky or autumn I can't I don't want to read about it I don't I don't care about descriptions I don't know how the curtains are falling I don't want to see what was dappled it's just not how my brain works Mm -hmm. and so the things that I write passionately about are the things that kind of need to come out of me and so when I know that I have an idea rather than when my agents come to me and are like do you want to write this book? I'm like, do you want to write an adaptation of this book? I'm like, no, I don't, I don't really care about that book, but um, mm-hmm. I know I have something to write when my mind is wandering all the time and it's wandering back to the same thing. You know, that thing that like, if you're, if you're cooking or if, if you're doing something where you're physically engaged, but your mind has the chance to wander, mm-hmm. the thing that you're thinking, the thing that my mind goes to, that's what I know pull that thread like pull it what's what's in there why does that keep coming back to you why can you not let that go and you know so um I've recently written about it hasn't come out yet because we're a couple of weeks behind but I've re- recently written about um an experience that I had in therapy where um I was in you know obviously when you go to therapy you're kind of in the same room in the same chair for this a number of weeks and you notice little things about the room and there were these two things in the room that were really bugging me like <laughs> there was this picture that was leaning on a wall and, and, and wasn't hung up. And this other, this filing cabinet that wasn't fitting into the alcove where it was placed. So I was like, why do I leave the room? And I'm annoyed at these little things. And so I pulled on that string. What is that? What is that? And it was because, you know, like, first of all, when you're in therapy, it's really easy to focus on those things because you don't have to focus on yourself. And then like, what are the, what are the misplaced items in my life? What are the things in my life that don't fit in, that jut out, that lean against my walls that I'll get to later? And so once I had the chance to pull that thread and see why it was annoying me, I was able to write um, something about it where I kind of had a revelation. I'm, I'm not going to go into it because it hasn't been published yet, but um, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's those things that inspire me, like the things that niggle at me. And, and sometimes they're very painful. And sometimes I write about them and it's very melancholic and very maudlin and it's not for public consumption, but somewhere in it, there might be a, you know, a kind of a, a gem of a kernel of something that I could keep. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I have to do is kind of be very compassionate to, to the things that I write. And I have an issue with compassion. I'm not, I'm kind of a, 
fairly neutral to negative person when it comes to my own life I can be very compassionate to other people but it doesn't be something that I can do to myself without thinking that I'm like wasting my time and I should be doing something more and um, productive and mm. um, so to be compassionate to the things that annoy me and, and that I write down because they're almost like little mm-hmm. premature things that are in an incubator that like you know you have to be very gentle with them and not not do too much and just let them like grow and thrive a little bit before before you can kind of see oh that's what it is and now I can now it's a bit more robust in my mind and I can make it into something I, that all seems very cerebral sorry yeah. <laughs> no but it's it's fascinating I suppose I, I just I, I think what I'm hearing from you is that as like and I get it as creatives um, as a creative myself it's kind of like that you're either so many creative ideas you're coming through and it's kind of like you're constantly trying to rather than letting them go down into some avenue that's mm. like really more wrong that you actually use them you take them you start taking them and going well maybe I could use that and use that because there's it's is that is that where it's somewhat yeah. description of it it's like you're, you're you're constantly using it like you're using what you're thinking rather than letting it go into like dark soil or does that uh, does yeah that... because sometimes when things particularly when things are painful or or a little bit shameful or you're embarrassed by them and you're like I only want to look directly at that thing yeah. that um that like if you if you can feel like they're useful for something mm. then at least the the shame is kind of eroded away by like look someone else was able to experience this maybe it's in the form of a character or maybe it's in something and mm. and and they relate to it and therefore I know that they're relating to me and therefore I'm not alone in the world. And I think that's all like, I don't really understand when writers say, um, oh, I just write for me and I just, I don't mind if no one ever reads it. I, I don't write for me. I don't, as I said, like I don't journal. I don't write for me because I think my whole existence has been to be like, look, I'm, can you please see me? Like I'm here yeah. and, and please just hear me. And can someone just say, hey, I see you. Yeah. You're here, that's cool. I'm the same as you you know um and it's kind of I I think it took me a while to be able to say that because there's something that's kind of a little bit not icky but like people kind of retreat a little when you say hey I want to be seen I want to be heard um people are like wow that's a bit brazen for you to say you know because you should be seen and not heard and girls particularly are meant to be silent and cooperative and it's not that I want to be radical or protest but you know I have things to say and I have I have points of view that I think are important and I I want someone to hear them yeah and I think that I think that's definitely what makes you stand out and that's what you've achieved and I suppose just moving on with the what I was going to ask you is what do you feel or when it comes to mind for you what is your biggest achievement to date what do you feel that might be um it's not funny when you ask that like all I'm see, all I'm feeling is my failures uh, um, oh isn't it we, well even if you go on instinct what comes even if it doesn't I, I think it's the fact that I'm still because you you know when you call out the list of things that I've done or I talk about the books that I've written or the tv shows that I've made I can also name for you like several tv shows that haven't gotten made yeah. several characters that I have created that live fully inside my head that are full lives that you'll never see on screen because they haven't been commissioned and I think the fact that I have the courage today I have the courage and some mm-hmm. days I have the courage to continue knowing that uh you know some people aren't going to like the things that I write and if I over identify with the things that I write which I do and it's something I'm working on then I experience them as not liking the things that I write as them not liking me and that can feel very uh, like that's a really pronounced sort of rejection when someone's like we're gonna pass on this it's they're literally being like no you're not you're not for us Mm -hmm. and like as as someone who writes who creates something from nothing so like it comes out of me it is me it is of me mm-hmm. when someone passes on it, it it can be quite awful and mm-hmm. um, and so the fact that I kind of keep going and that I haven't like switched careers and become um, I don't know whatever you know I guess that's an achievement yeah an absolute achievement and it's it's really is that like you literally I know we've been talking about you you were kind of looking at you saying as a negative of wanting to be seen it's like it's so important that you are seen and then you you stand out it's 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 it is your achievement I think that you're like I'm gonna put this out there I'm gonna be seen and I want you to see this and it's also with a really good voice what you're sharing is 
it, it touches everybody and it's just amazing you sharing what you're sharing with me this evening so thank you so much and everybody who's watching uh, and that's yeah that's really weird it feels because i can't i know on facebook so i don't know that anyone is watching but, uh, there is so. people watching and i'm sure there'll be loads of questions coming through and keep asking questions and we'll come back in after guys um <clears throat> so i suppose when it comes coming to first fortnight and i suppose um when did you like or like, what does it mean for you to be part of um a mental health arts festival right now especially in these times what what does it mean to you and i know you've come along to support thank us today thank you i know that i'm not part of the festival this year um like i'm not I, as in i'm not performing in the festival i don't have writing in the festival this year mm. but for the first time ever i felt this really strong compulsion to be like we need we need to be talking about this this year because I think for the first time in my history, in my living, in, in my lifetime, like we have this collective, we have all lost so much mm -hmm. together and we have a, a, probably a long way to go. Like maybe not as long as we've already done, but like we have to come out of this. And there are, the only way I know how to pro process things is through the arts, is through creativity. I don't know how else to do it. I can't. I've tried taking tablets to process things. I've tried drinking myself into oblivion and it doesn't work. The only way I know is, is through shared experience, is to go to, is to, I guess, zoom into a show and watch somebody else's live experience or read something and say, oh my God, this person who I've never met, who I don't know, sees me. They mm -hmm. see me and they're the same as me. And that means that I like they're performing this so they're okay they're doing well they're doing okay that means I can be okay mm -hmm. and I'm not alone and I and I might be really really lonely but I'm not alone mm -hmm. and so this year I just thought you know January is a cruel month it's a cruel month in the best of years yeah. and this year after everything it's an incredibly cruel month I mean literally every day we get told how many people have died it's and it's frightening and we become kind of our, our bodies are primed to be like we're going to shut that out mm -hmm. the numbers just become numbers mm -hmm. but that's that's our brain protecting us like somewhere in the back of it this is all going in and I just thought I'm definitely going to have to engage in the festival this year as an audience member to help me to to get through these things to help me to to feel seen to help me feel like I'm part of a community who are also watching something mm -hmm. and to to feel that uh, I use the word inspiration in its kind of literal form so inspiration means to inspire to breathe in at the same time and like I think when you're yeah. Yeah. when you're all watching something at the same time and you have that moment you feel like oh god that that resonates with me and I think theatre it's only like only the only in theatre and only when I read books do I have that feeling of you know when something when something resonates with you when someone says something it's because I think it resonates because we already know it inside us. Like it's true because something only resonates when it has something to bounce off. So we know something to be true inside us, but we haven't been able to put language on it. Or maybe it's a dance piece or maybe it's something you see and you see it for the first time. And you're like, that's the thing. Someone's been able to encapsulate this thing that's been in me that I haven't been able to. And like, that's an amazing gift when you get those insights into yourself so that's why I wanted to support the festival this year that's why I'll be watching things and that's why more than ever I think it's it, it's 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 a crutch that we all need to kind of lean on this year absolutely absolutely and uh, yeah and and to all and all and to all the artists and performers as well and everybody who's been watching it has been uh, uh, it's it's so touching and it's so important this year and uh, totally what you're saying there Stephanie is so true and I suppose just to to finish up um, if you could have one tip or even two tips for anybody that's watching us this evening and you've already inspired me and I'm sure so many other people are listening but if you had a tip for minding your mental health especially right now what would that be? <sighs> I, I'm so slow to answer this question because I'm I'm kind of struggling myself this week in particular like my mental health you know I'm, I'm sure I'm like I'm looking for tips and tricks online and so I guess well, the first, well, even, even just to be honest that's like the thing is just to say like I'm not I'm not okay like yeah and this I I have to start with a new therapist and that's really scary because it's kind of like this feeling of like oh god I have to get to know someone again after, you know that sort of like this 
ro- that feeling when you're at the start of a roller coaster where it's dragging and that suspense is there. I hate that feeling. But knowing that actually like I am, I'm really as a person worth investing that discomfort in. Like that roller coaster ride is is me and my life and 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 the potential within me. And I owe it to myself to like go through that discomfort so that something may come of it. So I don't know if that's a tip, but like just know that if you're feeling if you're feeling some kind of way somebody else is as well and 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 ask for the help that you need and it doesn't have to be straight to a therapist like say to a friend you know this is how I'm feeling have you noticed something different to me and and sometimes we don't need a therapist sometimes we just need one connection one thing that will get us through Um, and so I guess just speak up yeah absolutely and and share that's a it's a really really nice nice tip and also for and really it is to share and to tell somebody to share a friend to share with a buddy to share a partner with their family whatever it is even what you're saying it's so true and to I suppose it is that um saying that we all all say in our last we're grand (laughs) we're grand that's the thing we're grand and there's also kind of a rhetoric that's been happening in the last couple of weeks in the media that like gyms and salons are all the people need for their mental health you know it's like we have to keep the gyms open because of our mental health and gyms and salons are great for some people for their mental health for sure but for other people like that might be insufficient and if you feel like going to the gym is not enough for you or not something that you're capable of that's also okay and you don't have to get into the like it's not a one size fits all like we all have mental health like we all have physical health and sometimes you have a chest infection so your physical health is poor uh and and that's not forever but you're going to go up and down that scale and your mental health is a scale as well and sometimes it's going to be fine and sometimes it's not but that doesn't mean that you're going to be there forever but it does mean that you should get it looked at absolutely and listen thank you so much for sharing your journey so openly so honestly you have truly inspired me this evening and thank you so much and um i wish you every success as you keep going and bounding forward with those i don't know like even a a metaphor to describe you that powerhouse that you are (laughs) even in sharing your vulnerability and keeping putting it out there to the world keep doing it keep doing what you're doing um because you've inspired me and i'm sure everybody who's watching so thank you so much thank you so much okay bye now bye bye bye